insurrection, protests, and a union strike. A week really is a long time in politics. Tonight, on A View from the Bridge, we discuss these issues and their impact on your lives. Joining us tonight is Gerard Tully, KUSU president, followed by Andrew Griffin, associate editor of The Varsity, and finally, Vicki Perrin, vice president of CUTV. To begin, we're going to start with the most recent election involving Lord Sainsbury, our new chancellor of the university. Let me start off by saying, now, Lord Sainsbury, was, was he considered really the popular candidate? He was certainly the establishment candidate. I would have really actually quite liked to, to have done a poll of, of students to see what students really thought. Um, I think he was certainly, uh, among the university, the most popular candidate and the candidate that they wanted because they nominated. Yeah. Now, Bill Clinton has a, has a phrase. He likes to say that elections are about tomorrow. With the election of Lord Sainsbury as Chancellor, what does it say about Cambridge's tomorrow? I don't think it says uh, very much, apart from tomorrow is going to be a lot like the past. I think um, Lord Sainsbury was the establishment candidate um, and was uh, chosen because he wouldn't do much, I think. Um, and I think so tomorrow looks a lot like yesterday. Yeah, I think we also have to consider how big a role the Chancellor actually plays in the university anyway. Um, are they just a forget or do they actually have an active role within the university? If you look on the university's webpage and you look at the Chancellor's sort of job description, it is wonderfully vague. Right, now, now, Jared, you brought that up in an article, uh, an editorial you wrote um, this past week about the, the role of the Chancellor and, and what he's supposed to be. I mean, some people have commented that he's sort of you know, figurehead. Others have commented that he raises the global profile of the university. You mentioned that he, he should be an advocate for students, but my question is, you know, an advocate for students, isn't really that your job? So, so in, in a sense, w what does this job entail? Well, the thing about the Chancellor is that with our former one, he was married to the Queen, he had connections. Lord Sainsbury was a, a Labour minister, he's a peer, he also has connections. And, and what a lot of universities use their Chancellor for is to open doors. Um, which a student couldn't open, which the vice chancellor himself couldn't open, and it's up at that very high levels where it's useful if you have a chancellor who believes in sort of a progressive education policy, believes in the things which would make a university good. I think Lord Sainsbury is 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 capable of doing that. It remains to be seen if he will, but yeah, I think we all perhaps think about. I mean, the chancellor might open up doors to the university, but are schools doing what they ought to be doing to get into Oxbridge? in the first place. Um, I think it's a two-way thing and it's not just a good chancellor who will open up um, Oxbridge to all sorts of you know, state schools and grammar schools and private schools, but what those schools themselves are doing to get into the university. Absolutely. Now, one primary concern about students here and also students and re recent graduates of the university has been the economy, the job market, and what the university can do or what it really can't do to deal with um, getting a job. Um, the difference, it seems, with this recession is that unlike past recessions where um, the job market was, was especially tough for those without an education, we have the case where actually well-educated people are having trouble finding a job and that um, the age group in their, currently in their 20s are at, with degrees, or some with graduate degrees, are having problems finding jobs. If that is the case, it, are the days of having an Oxbridge degree opening uh, doors left and right over? Or, or have we entered a new phase? What do you think? I think it's important to remember that there's a lot more graduates than there were every past recession. Kind of, um, a lot more. Uh, so it's, it's I, I, I don't think the comparison is completely fair, but yeah, absolutely. Um, I think in some ways it's good that an Oxbridge degree is not the ticket to um, what it, the place that it used to be, like a job in the city or a job in the civil service, or all those kind of high um, power jobs. That's in some ways a good thing, but yes, absolutely, there's also the flip side of that, which is also that it's not um, a ticket to any jobs anymore. Yeah, I also think that um, the, it's not just a question about what university is doing to get a student's job after they, after they graduate, but thinking about how the job market is working more generally, people are working to a later age, so that's pushing younger people out, whether they are educated or not. Um, I think the situation is a bit more complex than just a university is doing X to get a student a job. 
happening is a bit more complex. Right, but going back to our, our earlier discussion about the Chancellor, what could a university like a Cambridge or like an Oxford do for its graduates, given this, this sort of this shift in the job market, especially regarding university degrees? I think that's, I mean, it's difficult because I don't think, I certainly wouldn't want Cambridge to be, I don't think most people want Cambridge to be a place where you're trained for a job. It's a place where you come because you're interested in learning and learn for its own sake. Um, one of the things the university does well is it has an excellent career service. In Cambridge, students are very lucky in that it's incredibly well equipped, incredibly well connected, and not enough students use it, in my opinion. Um, but beyond that, I don't think universities should compromise themselves and their integrity to look good on employment statistics, because I don't think that's the, that's the point of a world-class research university. Andrew Hamilton, Vice Chancellor of Oxford University, mentioned that he was considering a, an extra loan for postgraduate study. For instance, we, we have many people at the university. They graduate after three years with a Bachelor of Arts degree, and many of them have chosen, given the job market, given the economy, to take a postgraduate degree, a one-year Master of Philosophy degree. That would, in four years, give them two degrees and make them competitive with their contemporaries, say, in Europe and the United States. What do you think about a, a plan like that, a postgraduate scheme uh, for loans or scholarships for those who want to continue their education, build on their qualifications? I think it's an excellent plan. I mean, uh, postgraduate study should obviously not be seen as a, a postponement um, of, of the, the real world of, of work, and um, which I hate that phrase. Uh, but uh, yes, there should be, there's not the opportunities in, the, in, in that kind of wider world of work anymore. There needs to be opportunities opened up, not just because um, it's a place for people to go when they haven't got jobs, but also because if we're going to get out of this recession, we need a highly trained workforce that's, as you say, competitive um, with European workforces and with the workforce in the United States. So um, it's not just a matter of, of postponing it, but yeah, we need the best workforce we can have. And, and the way to do that is in part to make sure that people can do the study that they need to do. So I think when you really, sorry, when you really drill down, the fact is that the state should be funding um, postgraduate research in this country for, for the brightest graduates, certainly, and it just isn't. We've got massive, massive research cuts. I think it's really interesting that the Oxford VC is coming out and saying this because no one should be having to take on more debt if they're academically able enough to pursue world-class research. But given the fact that, that you have real cuts across the board to all services, to all industries, private and public, do you think it's time that perhaps the university look at more public-private partnerships, for example, Lord Sainsbury's obviously has has uh, friends or colleagues who work in areas ranging from biomedical research to industrial manufacturing. Do you think there's an opportunity for perhaps the private sector to pick up the slack in terms of, of loans and scholarships and, and schemes that support undergraduate and postgraduate study? I think there's a, there's a terrifying opportunity that's going to happen, and uh, it looks a lot like there's going to be you know, business-sponsored degrees, which is... Um, is not a good thing because it means that it's a, it's a gradual encroachment which feels like it's moving towards um, some kind of system of sponsorship which is going to mean that um, for one inevitably the less um, important vocational sorry the less vocational less important jobs like um, say my subject English it aren't going to be sponsored because there's no one to sponsor them because no one needs them and um, that starts looking even more terrifyingly like um, some sort of market and uh, it's going to be the useful degrees that continue to flourish 